What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Before we get this video started, I just want to give a big shout out to everyone who is subscribed to this channel, everyone who watches these videos, likes the videos, comments, even everyone who doesn't like my videos. This channel has gained so much momentum over this last year here and as we're nearing the end of 2021. Just want to give a big fat thank you to everybody who watches these videos. Channel's doing pretty good for a full-time fishing guide that just uh, makes videos on the side for fun. Always try and throw some sort of educational value into the content that I put out, as well as some awesome fish catches. So for the channel to just be right on the cusp of 20,000 subscribers, I cannot thank you guys enough. So anyway, we're out here on a beautiful Monday afternoon. It's a little bit breezy, it's pretty warm, but the main purpose of today's video is to go over all of my settings as it pertains to side scan, down scan, as well as live scope in the front. I've done a couple videos in the past, but the, at this point they're kind of outdated with the new updates that have come out, new transducers, all of my new units. So I think it was really time to uh, just put out a dedicated video to showing everybody what my settings are that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and how I adjust them accordingly, depending on the conditions of the day. So for right now, we're just kind of driving around at the console here. Don't quite have live scope down. We're gonna save that one for last, but wanna go over the settings that I run on my Echomap Ultra 126. I run the GT56 transducer off the back. I also have an Echomap 93 SV UHD right next to it that I use for dedicated mapping. I do still have the GT54 rigged up to the 93 SV in the back of the boat, but I rarely use it. And then in the front of the boat, I've got an Echomap Ultra 106 dedicated catered for live scope up there. So again, we're just kind of driving around, running the river channels here, trying to do a little bit of pre-fishing for uh, tomorrow's guide trip, but let's dive right into the settings that I'm running on my Echomap Ultra 126. All right, so first and foremost, uh, I've said this a hundred times and I will say it again, the Garmin makes it so easy when you buy the unit to just rig it up on your boat, turn it on and start using it on the auto settings that it comes with. Now that being said, can you dial your settings in to make them look a lot better for what you're looking for? Yes, but if you're not a guy that wants to get out there and uh, learn the units themselves and what all the settings do, you can just turn this on and start using it and it'll work just fine. But that being said, again, Garmin's menus make it super easy to navigate versus Humminbird and Lowrance where the menus get a little bit convoluted and things are a little bit more complicated. So that's why I really have always enjoyed Garmin for the last seven or eight years that I've been running them. So with that being said, let's uh, take a look at the Echo Map Ultra 126 here. So as you guys can see on the 126 we've got 12 inches of prime real estate on the screen versus the nine down here like i said that i just used for mapping and you guys can see i am running the gt56 transducer and right now i'm running down view at 810 kilohertz and on side scan i'm running 1070. so that being said when you are running a split screen situation with down scan and side scan you have to keep your frequencies different. So for instance, if your down view is at 1070 as well as your side view, your side view is gonna be completely blown out. Everything is gonna be way too bright. And that's something that I found uh, obviously just with experience. So always make sure that you're running two different frequencies on the same unit when you're running side view versus down view. So in talking about different frequencies, the GT56 comes with three different kilohertz ranges. So we've got 455, 810, and 1070. What you always want to remember about running uh, different frequencies on any sort of transducer or anything like that is that the lower the number, the better coverage range you have, but the less detail. So then on the flip side of that, the higher your kilohertz, the less coverage range you have, but the better detail you're gonna get. So depending on what you're looking for is dependent on what frequency you're gonna set your unit at on any given day. So for me personally, I like running my side scan on 1070 kilohertz because I am gonna get pretty good range, especially with the GT56 transducer. Right now you guys can see that I'm shooting out 70 feet to the left and 70 feet to the right. And that's just what I'm comfortable with. But with the GT56 transducer, you can scan all the way out to 100, almost 130 feet and still get really, really good range. It's also gonna give you really, really good detail at a much higher range. So then on the other side of that, on the down view, I am running 810 kilohertz and just remember, we're running two different frequencies always on down scan and side scan. So with 810 kilohertz, I feel like I get a really, really good picture and still get decent 
decent coverage. I used to run just 455, but as you change the frequencies in the menu, you will see that your picture will change as well. Colors will appear a lot brighter, a lot darker, depending on up going up or down with the frequency. But again, that's just something that uh, depending on your personal preference, you're gonna wanna play around with on your own. So that being said, let's dive right into the menu here. And uh, if you guys are wanting to change your frequencies, you just go to menu and then you'll see it brings up the side menu here. And then that third option down is your frequency and you can drop it from 455 to 810 to 1070. Again, just depending on what you wanna see. So if we change this from 810 to 455 and then go back, you'll see that line there. See how the color changes from darker to lighter? That's a pretty big difference right there. So it's gonna make things appear a little bit more blown out and then you're gonna have to adjust your brightness and contrast from there. But I'm just gonna switch this back to 810 where we're comfortable with. So then contrast and brightness, I leave my contrast right around 55%. The unit itself comes with the default setting which is right around 50%. So I bump that up to a little bit higher at 55. My brightness is at 88%. The default setting for this unit is on uh, auto high, I believe. And auto Auto high is right around 90 some percent. But again, that really just kind of depends if you guys go to the brightness setting and then change it up or down. It's gonna be pretty tough to tell, but you guys can see even in the black water column area of your graph, you're gonna see a lot of noise there. So that's why I always bring mine down so that that black part of the screen, which is your water column, just shows up straight black. So your range right here, range is set to auto and that just means your depth range. So if you're working a real dynamic depth area where it's going up, down, up, down, you probably just wanna leave it on auto because that's gonna adjust your bottom as you go. But if you're scanning, say a big flat that is you know, 15 or 16 feet deep, you can go to your range and then set your range right around 20 feet. And that means your depth is not gonna change from 20, but that being said, if you dip below 20, you're gonna lose your bottom. So for me on these Kansas reservoirs that I fish, I always leave my range on auto. You're still gonna get a great picture, but if you guys are scanning one area that's the same depth, you can set your range automatically and it will give you a little bit better picture. So zoom on the menu, that's something that you guys can change. So say you go over a big brush pile and you see that there might be some fish on it. If you go to zoom and then hit magnify, that's gonna bring up this little magnifying box right here. That's gonna allow you to really just zoom in on that brush pile and see a little bit more details to what you're looking at. It's not something you necessarily wanna leave on, it's just something that you wanna to toggle on and off when you actually see what you're looking for in your target. But you can just click that, you see that uh, it turns green to signify that it's on and then turn it off. But that's about the only zoom that I use on the screen. So then let's dig a little bit deeper into sonar setup. You get a ton of options here, but we're only gonna use a couple of them. So depth line, I just leave that hidden. My scroll speed, a lot of guys will leave this on auto, but when you leave it on auto, when you're stopped, you're not gonna get a really good picture. So sometimes I like to leave it on right about the seven range because that's gonna give me a really good picture as I'm scanning along at about two or three miles an hour. But then when I'm stationary, I still get a really good picture. If you leave it on auto when you're stopped, you're just gonna get a bunch of big blobs that go across the screen. It's not gonna give you a good picture because whenever you're scanning, you always wanna be moving. So if the fish are moving when you're stationary you will get a good picture but say you're sitting over a big brush pile and somebody in the back of the boat wants to be able to see their jig dropping down they're not going to be able to see it because it's going too slow and you're sitting stationary so for me personally i adjust the scroll speed right around seven or eight you're still going to get a great picture but it's going to be keeping up with the speed that you're going so then your on-screen control you've got uh, brightness and range i leave mine on range but i never really adjust it and then from there your color scheme so this is another really good one to talk about personal preference because I've actually just been kind of playing around with these before I started filming the video, but I'd say 90% of the time I leave my screen on orange crawfish. It shows me exactly what I need to see in really bright color. So see, you can hear we've got some crappies on that tree right there. But then obviously if you switch the colors around, say we go to midnight blue, I really like that one for picking off crappies can still see it really well. Black Emerald shows up really bright. We're just gonna leave it on that one. But again, color scheme is all personal preference. I play with them a lot, just depending on what I'm looking for. But in the end, it all just depends on what you wanna see. So then we'll go back here. Overlay data just shows you what's on the screen over in the corner right here. We're not gonna pay attention to that right now. Sonar recording, again, don't need to pay attention to that. Advanced, if you go to advanced, 
Interference surface noise and TVG are the ones you wanna pay attention to. I leave my interference on low as well as TVG. If you guys have live scope, you'll probably know that TVG stands for time varying gain. And even on live scope, I leave that off or on low. It's pretty rare that I set that any, any higher than low on medium or high. So low is right about where you wanna be. Bottom search limit, I just leave on auto. But that, as far as any Echo Map menu goes, is just about everything you need to know. So everything that we just covered right there will pretty much cover you for both down view as well as side view. A lot of the same settings apply. So just for example, let's switch uh, this over to side view right here. So if we go to menu, you will see that pretty much the whole entire menu is the same. You've got your frequency, you've got your range, zoom, sonar setup, gives you the scroll speed. Now, one thing on side scan is I do leave the scroll speed just a little bit slower because I do want to pick up as much detail as possible from each side. That is one that you absolutely can leave on auto, which auto is right around five. But again, I leave mine, I bump mine up just because I scan sometimes, I tend to scan a little bit quick. So I wanna bump that up a little bit to match my speed in the boat. On-screen control brings your range. So range is from side to side as well. Your color scheme, I really enjoy the amber color scheme. I mean, some of the other ones are gonna show you different things, but as far as original settings that the Garmin comes with, I do leave mine on amber. And then in advanced, my uh, interference and TVG are both set on low and the same settings apply for down view as well. But again, in the end, it just takes you knowing what those settings do and then getting out on the water and actually applying them. Ooh, here we go. We've got a big school of fish right here, uh, about what, 30 or 40 feet right off the right side of the boat. So here, for example, let's use the zoom feature magnify situation here. So one thing I always say, when you guys wanna pause the screen, all you have to do is go down, press the pause button. Right now it's pause, so it's just gonna show a play button, but that will allow you to just go ahead and move that cursor right there and then drop a waypoint with this button right up here in the right hand corner to drop a waypoint. So that being said, if you wanna see a little bit closer in detail what those fish look like, you can go to the menu button and then go to zoom and then hit magnify and then it's gonna bring up this magnifying glass right here. So that magnifying glass, you guys can see clear as day, the white fish right there, just they show up a little bit brighter and then you can also see the shadows below them. So that's a fantastic example of what fish should look like, even in deep water on side scan right there. Definitely a true testament to how awesome that GT56 transducer is. And a lot of guys always ask in the Garmin Fishing Electronics Facebook group, if the GT56 is worth the extra $500? And I say, absolutely, yes it is. And that image right there is a clear example of why you guys should definitely go the GT56 route. But also a great example of how you can use the Zoom Mag magnify feature and just zoom in on any targets on your screen right there. So all that being said, does that mean that you guys have to rush out and spend 3000 plus dollars on the Echo Map Ultra 126? No, but the benefits of the 126 and the Ultra units in general, obviously you've got a much larger screen. So if you guys like running split screens, that's an advantage right there. But the processor speed of this unit versus the 93 is night and day. I kind of feel that the 93 SV has a little bit more choppy kind of picture as it goes across the screen, whereas, especially with the maps as well, but whereas the 126 has a much smoother return as you get that image across the screen. Obviously the pixels per inch on the screen are way higher on a 12 inch screen. So that's why I opted to actually move my 12 inch unit from the front to the back and then put a 10 up front. And that's just because I spend a fair amount of time at the console scanning. So I want the biggest, clearest, crispest picture possible when I'm running side scan and down scan at the console here. But all that was to say, if you guys have a 93 with the GT56 transducer, you can do the exact same thing that we're doing on the 126. So now that we've got all the settings covered that I run on my console unit here for scanning, let's jump up to the front of the boat and go over all my live scope settings on the Ultra 126. All right, so if you guys have seen my previous video before, I do run the sea light pole for my live scope transducer. Definitely, probably easily the best mount for your live scope transducer on the market if you guys wanna spend that money. There's several of them out there and uh, you guys have seen probably on my channel before that I do have a DIY hack for a live scope mount just using PVC pipe that you can do for like 20 bucks at Home Depot. But in the long run, if you're spending so much money on graphs and live scope and stuff, you probably just wanna pop for the sea light pole. I'm now partnered with those guys and I have a discount code listed down below, but easily the easiest and best 
live scope pull on the market as far as what it does and how easy it is to stow and deploy. So we'll just go ahead and get this guy down real quick, loosen up all the set screws here. It is easy to deploy, but uh, sometimes not the easiest to do with one hand while you're holding a camera. Get that cranked down and then loosen up the set screw on the tension, drop it down, boom, there you go. So on the sea light pole, I've got the uh, extension to make the pole 60 inches long because obviously I've got a deep V. So if you guys are thinking about that, that's definitely something that you want i've also got it on a quick detach plate that they also sell because when i put my boat cover on sometimes i can just take this whole thing off and just lay it on my front deck here so yeah now we've got live scope down and uh, we're just going to go work on getting over a brush pile and just kind of go over all the settings that i run on my 106 ultra here all right so we've got the tarova down we've got it running at about like on the five or six speed right now and we've got the sea light pull down gotta say for somebody who trolls around and moves spots a lot the best thing about the sea light pulls that you can go up to like five or six miles an hour with this thing down and it is absolutely not going to move when i used to run my diy pvc pull situation on a ram mount that thing would just bend back all the way if i even tried to troll around so again if you like moving around a lot and not having to move the live scope pull up and down or still and deploy whatever definitely recommend the sea light pull because that sucker's not going anywhere when you're under power but that being said if you don't want to actually keep it in the water when you're trolling just for a safety precaution you can always just loosen up the set screw and then bring this guy all the way up to wherever your wire stops and then just tighten that set screw back down and it'll stay up like that. Again, a lot of different uh, options with the sea light pull. I will link that video down below where I go over my whole entire setup and show you how that uh, actually stows and deploys on its own. So again, I run the Echo Map Ultra 106 on the front here. So that's a 10 inch screen. Because it's an ultra unit, you've got a much faster processor than the 93 SV. And that's what I ran forever in the front of the boat until I upgraded and got on Garmin's Pro Staff. The 93 SV will work just fine, but I really do like having Having that, that quicker processor and the little bit bigger screen. Those are things that you should definitely take into account if you're trying to spend some extra money. You don't need the 12 inch screen up here. You get a little bit less detail. I think the, the 106 Ultra is the perfect middleman for that situation. So anyway, let's dive right in here. So this is how I've got my screen set up right now. So you can see we're shooting 20 feet out in the forward view right now. I rarely use the down view uh, with the transducer. I'm always wanting to know what's coming to me and what's coming from behind me instead of from side to side. So you can see we're sitting in 22 feet of water. I've got my depth range set to 30 feet. That is one thing you want to remember with live scope is to never leave your depth on auto. Always manually adjust your depth based on what's your what, what depth you're in. That is one thing you always want to remember with live scope is always manually adjust your depth. Don't ever leave it on auto. That is definitely gonna, you're gonna sacrifice some quality if you leave it on auto. So then let's just go right into the menu here. So I've got my gain set at 57%. I feel like depending on your water clarity and water conditions, that's probably right where you want to be. If we bump it up into the 60s, you guys can see we get a ton of interference in the black water column part right there. So that's why I just bring that down, leave it right between probably 55 and 60, depending on your water clarity. And we'll go back to the menu here again. My depth range is set at 30 right now. Forward range is 20. So generally when I'm searching for fish, I'm shooting about 40 or 50 feet out. And then when I find the target that I'm looking for, I dial that back down to 20 because that's going to give you much better detail on your picture. And that's all really easy to do with the on-screen controls right here. So this right here is your forward range. So here we're shooting out 65 feet. You guys can see right about 55 feet over that way. There is a brush pile with some fish on it right there. So I've already got that one marked over there. So if I wanted to go over that way and get over the top of it, then I would just dial that range back down to uh, 20 feet. 20 or 25 is probably good. So we'll go back to the menu here. Um, we've got our sonar setup is the next menu you wanna go there. So the very first one is the appearance. I really like black emerald. Um, basically for any application, your targets appear really, really bright. Amber works well too, but again, color scheme, all personal preference. So color gain, this is probably the most important live scope setting that a lot of guys miss because a lot of guys will ask, why can't I see my jig? When I drop my bait down, I can't see my jig. The reason is because you don't have your color gain set high enough. The default setting for color gain when you get these units out of the box is like, 50%. But if you crank that color gain all the way up to 95, your targets, your fish, your brush, your jigs are going to appear so much brighter when you're dropping them down. That's something you want to keep between like 90 and 95%. That is definitely the one thing that I've seen as far as questions go on my channel on the Garmin Electronics Facebook page. Why can't
can't I see my jig? Why can't I see my jig? Well, for two reasons. Your transducer is either on backwards or your color gain is not high enough. So definitely always, always remember that one. So I'm gonna go back here to the previous menu. Trails I always leave off. I don't wanna see the trails from the fish or my jigs. It just creates more noise on the screen. Bottom fill I leave off. If you guys toggle that on, you get this kind of weird situation for the bottom right there. I'm not really a big fan, so I always leave that off. And we'll go back to the previous menu. Layout, um, layout just shows you. So we've got the grid overlay here. I leave my grid overlay off. I have a pretty good indication of how big fish are in relation to my bait when they're already down there. So I just kind of feel like that grid overlay creates a little bit more uh, busyness on the screen, but a lot of guys do like that because it helps them, depending on how far you're shooting out, give them an idea of how far, how big targets are. But again, I leave mine off, easily toggleable. Scroll history, I leave on hide, on-screen control, show. Again, your on-screen control is your forward range, your gain, and then your depth range. Okay, really important topics here. Noise reject, I always leave on high. So if we turn that noise reject off, let's look and see what it does. We get a lot more going on the screen. You can see the beams from the transducer as well as just more noise down there. I always leave mine on high for obvious reasons. Cleanest picture. TVG, same thing, time varying gain. Mine is off right now, but as we change that, so we go low, medium, high. It's actually a little bit difficult to tell today because we've got super sunny conditions here. But generally it is, like I said, gonna create way more noise on the screen. It may help you see things a little bit better, but in the end you want the clearest, crispest picture possible. So I always leave mine off or on low, just depending on how clear, how muddy the water is. Ghost reject, this was a new update earlier this year, late last year. That just helps get rid of the ghost tree. I don't ever really have an issue with it. I always leave mine off because it does create some other issues and that you'll have to adjust other settings for i suggest leaving that feature off overlay data again all this stuff that you can toggle back and forth is just what's going to be shown up there in the corner and guys that's uh that's really about it those are all the settings that i always recommend to people uh i can leave them in the comments below i can put them in the description or you can just watch this again i get accused all the time on this channel of talking way too fast so just like rewind the, the video if I talk too fast. It seems like there's a lot of topics to cover when it comes to the settings, but uh, once you get the hang of everything and realize how little it actually is, uh, it becomes really easy. And I rarely ever change my settings because I fish a lot of the same waters every day as a full-time fishing guide. But if your lake choices are really dynamic, if you're in dirty water, clear water, whatever, you will want to adjust settings uh, day by day, depending on the body of water that you're on. And then I think that's it. Um, if you guys notice that I do have my 106 up really high here on my stowaway mount. If you guys have not heard of stowaway mounts, please definitely go to their website and check out the two mounts that they offer. This is the regular version. It brings it up like 30 some inches, but then they do have an XL version, which will bring that screen pretty much like all the way up here. Local company out of Lee Summit, Missouri. I've been working with them for the last year and a half. I helped prototype this mount myself before it was even on the market. And I have a discount code for that, which is listed down below. So if you guys are in the market for an American made, locally made, high quality, live scope graph mount definitely please go check out stowaway mounts larry and steve are the best so with that being said uh, i am gonna try and fish a little bit while i'm out here seeing as how i'm kind of scouting for tomorrow's guide trip but if you guys have any questions or comments on the live scope and down scan and side scan settings please leave them down below i feel like i covered a lot of things that are going to help you guys get started and figuring out what the settings do but if you've watched this whole entire video and you still don't feel like playing with anything just get your garmin unit take it out of the box, hook it up, turn it on and start using it because the default settings will still give you a great picture. So anyway, that's about all I have for you guys as far as my Garmin stuff for today. It is Christmas week. I've got a busy week guiding all the way up till Christmas. So I'm not sure if I will see you guys again before that day. So if I don't, I hope you guys have a great Christmas with friends and family. I know I will. I'm looking forward to a day or two off and that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure you check out the videos linked down below and at the end of the video and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.